Hello everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, where we shine a light on the unsung heroes of our biology, those tiny mitochondria we carry around. I'm Ethan Foster, here to explore some health insights with all the subtlety of a hammer that needs a nap. I'm thrilled to be joined by my co-captain on this investigative voyage, Alara Skye. Delighted to be here, Ethan. You know me, I'm all about the big ideas in small packages, and what could be smaller and mightier than a mitochondrion? Since we're diving into the microscopic, let's call it a deep dive into the deep cells. Perfect. I like to keep things compact and functional, kind of like a well-packed suitcase. So, let's jump right in with a bold tagline. How about, where the cell's powerhouses meet the unstoppable comedic stylings of two people who can't stop talking? Too grand? Sounds about right. Besides, I suspect mitochondria have a sense of humor. They have to, given all the trouble we put them through. Let's start with the big picture. We're connecting the dots between mitochondrial dysfunction, chronic inflammation, and yes, the big one, cancer risk. Indeed. There's research showing that if your mitochondria go on strike and stop making enough ATP, your cells can't clean house properly. Without that housekeeping, the NLRP3 inflammasome, which I always picture as some kind of secret rebellious complex inside the cell, gets overly dramatic. And once that complex is triggered, it's like a party you can't shut down. If the NLRP3 inflammasome were in a rom-com, it'd be the one making big, overblown gestures. Except there's no happy ending. It basically stirs up all kinds of inflammatory chaos, letting damaged cells hang around longer than they should. Imagine if you had a dinner guest who not only never leaves, but also starts rearranging your furniture. Yes, and to add to the bizarre guest analogy, these troublemaking cells can eventually turn cancerous. It's almost like you invited them for a polite dinner, and they took it as a cue to move into your spare room permanently. They drag in their relatives, start painting the walls neon orange, and you're stuck with the chaos. Precisely. But the real question is, why does it happen? Well, a big reason is that once the mitochondria fail to produce adequate ATP, the cell can't go through apoptosis properly. Apoptosis is that wonderful self-destruct button that's supposed to rid us of potentially harmful cells. But if that button is jammed, these messed up cells keep replicating. Next thing you know, you're dealing with chronic inflammation or worse. Right. There's a specific process called oxidative phosphorylation, or OXPHOS, that helps mitochondria produce ATP. But when OXPHOS goes on vacation, the mitochondria's inner folds, called cristae, change shape. This traps a little molecular champion called cytochrome C, meaning it can initiate the cell's self-destruct sequence. Which is exactly the moment your body starts handing out get out of apoptosis free cards. And guess who's showing up at the table waving those cards around? The NLRP3 inflammasum. That's the short story, at least. We get chronic inflammation because these damaged cells are essentially unevictable squatters. And chronic inflammation is the soil in which cancer can take root and flourish. That's a pretty grim scenario. But hey, it's not all gloom and doom. Or so we hope. There are ways to keep your mitochondria happy, which keeps NLRP3 from partying too hard. We just have to figure out how to supply these powerhouses with what they need so they don't get depressed and start calling in trouble. Exactly. It's kind of like ensuring your roommate has coffee in the morning so they don't break all the dishes before 8 a.m. In the metabolic sense, that coffee is enough ATP production. With ATP levels nice and high, the cellular processes run more smoothly, your body can handle threats, and inflammation stays in check. Now, for clarity, NLRP3 doesn't act alone. It typically needs a couple of signals to get fully activated. One of those signals involves the mitochondria. The second might be some other stress signal, but if the mitochondria are humming along happily, that second signal won't immediately set the place on fire. You know, it's always about synergy. Two signals, one big outcome, and the outcome is either an inflammation meltdown or a stable equilibrium. If you're tipping the seesaw toward meltdown, you're basically handing out invitations for inflammation to go wild. True. Now, Dr. Mercola's analysis pointed out that about 20% of all cancers are linked to chronic inflammation. That's a big chunk of trouble. And that's just from the synergy of inflammation alone. Add in your environment, your diet, and your lifestyle, and the percentages can climb higher. And the stat that 125 million adults in the U.S. are dealing with chronic inflammation? That's staggering. If that many people are basically living in smoldering metabolic conditions, it's no wonder we're seeing an uptick in all sorts of diseases. It's like having half the town's houses with small kitchen fires that never get put out. Eventually, that smoke inhalation is going to cause bigger issues. And we see that with cancer as the second leading cause of death, claiming over 600,000 lives a year in this country. That's not an insignificant number. No, it's not. But let's highlight a key point. Mitochondrial dysfunction directly powers all this. When your mitochondria can't pump out enough ATP, the cell doesn't just mope around in low energy depression. It triggers these inflammatory and cancerous pathways. So you essentially have a trifecta of trouble, low energy, 
high inflammation, and unstoppable rogue cells. Which means focusing on mitochondrial health isn't just a trendy wellness hack. It might be the foundation for preventing these diseases altogether. On the bright side, there are ways to restore your little cell power plants. I'm all for a practical approach. Let's talk about that, because it's not every day you get to talk about Chris Day rearranging and lethal dinner guests. But here we are. So let's get into that. How do we keep mitochondria performing at their best? Question. One major factor is diet. The modern diet is rife with processed foods and seed oils. These seed oils are loaded with linoleic acid, the sworn enemy of a happy mitochondrion. Picture your mitochondria as allergic to that stuff. It not only saps their energy, it can poison them in a slow, methodical way. And once those poor mitochondria are compromised, the entire cell is basically running a marathon with shoes tied together. So the first step is ditching the processed foods and those sneaky seed oils. That means cooking with stable fats, things like butter, tallow, or ghee, if they fit your approach. Also, restaurant fare often uses these seed oils. So if you eat out a lot, you're basically playing dodgeball with your mitochondria as the ball. You might want to skip the deep fried wonders or those salad dressings with that suspicious slick. The simplest way is to check an online tracker because nothing says, I'm nailing adult life, like counting your grams of linoleic acid in an app, right? It's a brave new world, Alara. Next up, let's tackle carbohydrates. Some people think carbs are the arch enemy, but your cells actually prefer glucose to produce energy. The key is to pick the right kinds and the right amounts. There's no one size fits all, but for many of us, 200 to 350 grams of targeted carbohydrates daily might help your mitochondria do their job properly. Of course, you adapt that amount depending on your activity level. If you're training for a triathlon, you probably need more carbs than someone who's primarily training to reach the TV remote. It's also important to pay attention to your gut. If your gut's out of whack, introducing a ton of fiber might make things worse at first. You could consider easily digestible options like white rice or fruits before adding fibrous vegetables. Maybe start with a baby step or a baby spoonful. Absolutely. If your gut is truly compromised, some folks even try sipping dextrose water to ease into the carbohydrate reintroduction. They just do it slowly all day. No dramatic sugar roller coaster. Then they move on to real food once their gut stops threatening a mutiny. On the topic of threats, environmental toxins are no joke either. Endocrine disruptors, excessive estrogens, and electromagnetic fields, all of them can strangle your cell's ability to crank out energy. It's like trying to read a book under strobe lights. Not exactly conducive to focus. And once your cells are stuck in that low energy rut, your gut environment may shift to favor all kinds of nasty, endotoxin-producing bacteria. So it becomes a vicious cycle. Fewer resources for your beneficial bacteria, more resources for your bad guys. The synergy's real, except it's an evil synergy. Precisely. It's a gangster synergy, not the motivational type. But the good news is, if you tackle the big culprits, cut down on the seed oils, keep an eye on environmental toxins, and reduce EMF exposure where feasible, you help your mitochondria breathe a sigh of relief. Then your gut can also breathe a sigh of relief. And that, in turn, should help keep the NLRP3 inflammasum from staging a protest in your cells. Because we want that complex to remain on standby, not to form a picket line around your tissues. Well put. Another tool is boosting your NAD plus levels. Niacinamide is often suggested for that, in small doses throughout the day. NAD plus is crucial for energy production. It's like a spark plug for the mitochondrial engine. And it also helps with apoptosis. So if a cell is irreparably damaged, having enough NAD plus means you can ensure it hits the self-destruct button gracefully. No leftover damaged cells making trouble. That's something we definitely want. Let's also talk sunlight, the old-fashioned star in the sky. So many people think of the sun as purely a vitamin D dispenser, but there's more. Early morning sun exposure can spark mitochondrial melatonin production. That's an antioxidant that helps keep these powerhouses safe from damage. Just start slow if you're a habitual indoors enthusiast. Maybe go outside in the earlier hours when the sun's a bit gentler. And if you've been feasting on seed oils for years, your skin might be more prone to sunburn, so keep that in mind. Once you cut back on linoleic acid, your tolerance improves. Yes, it's ironic that sometimes the best technology for cellular health is just letting nature do its job. But it's not flashy, so people forget about it. Meanwhile, mitochondria are sitting there, waving a little sign that says, we'll produce ATP for sunlight, please help. So to summarize, keep linoleic acid low, choose carbs intelligently, avoid toxins, reduce EMF exposure, boost NAD plus for proper cell death protocols, and soak up some rays. That's basically the cheat sheet for healthy mitochondria. This helps block the cascade that leads to chronic inflammation, and, by extension, certain types of cancer. Exactly. Because once that cascade is set off, it's like a chain reaction. Damaged cells that should be turned over stay alive, and the body's inflammatory response never quite winds down. That's a recipe for trouble. We'd rather have a recipe for, oh, I don't know, a lovely mitochondria-friendly meal? Perhaps a dinner featuring a moderate portion of white rice, 
some grilled grass-fed steak in a stable fat marinade, and a big side of gentle vegetables that don't sabotage your gut. A sweet bowl of fruit for dessert. It's not punishment. It's fueling your body in a way that says, hey, mitochondria, we appreciate you. That's right. Let's not forget that every time you choose to keep these factors in balance, you're effectively investing in your future health. It's easier to prevent damage than to fix it once it's done. And your cells will thank you for that. Consider your cells like a team of interior designers. If they have the resources, they keep your body in prime condition. But if you feed them junk, you end up with a living room that's half burnt, half underwater, and no one knows where to put the sofa. Now, that's an image, but you're absolutely right. In the grand scheme, it's about giving your body what it needs so it can stay balanced. Chronic inflammation throws off that balance, creating a domino effect, leading to so many conditions, not just cancer. We're talking cardiovascular issues, diabetes, and even neurological problems. Because you can't separate the talk of inflammation and disease risk from the engine that drives every cell. If the engine's sputtering, the rest of the car's not winning any races. And now that we've hammered home the point, let's circle back to our comedic promise. Some might say, you two were supposed to be funny. Well, who said science can't be comedic? If learning about preventing cancer at the mitochondrial level doesn't get your heart racing, maybe our random analogies will. The takeaway? If you're going to obsess over anything, obsess over keeping your mitochondria happy. It's the best kind of obsession. It's cheaper than buying a new car, and you can do it in your pajamas if you want. That's the spirit. And with that, let's wrap up with a final word of cellular wisdom. Your body's natural processes are brilliant, but they can only do so much if your everyday choices sabotage them. Keep those everyday choices in line, and your mitochondria will reward you by fending off inflammation, letting old or damaged cells self-destruct as needed, and keeping the NLRP3 drama to a minimum. Well said. Our hope is that everyone listening will take at least one small step to safeguard their mitochondrial health. Because in the end, we're more than just comedic banter. We're comedic banter on a mission to help you stay as healthy as possible at the cellular level. So, that's our episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Thanks for tuning in to hear about tiny power plants, overstaying dinner guests, and the miracle of ATP. I'm Ethan Foster, your mild-mannered observer, who wonders if the NLRP3 inflammasome also has a day job. And I'm Alara Skye, eternally hopeful that comedic relief and health insights can coexist in one place. Until next time, remember, keep those mitochondria well-fed, keep the inflammation toned down, and keep the comedic perspective alive. After all, no reason we can't lighten the load while lighting up the cell's powerhouses. Right on. Farewell, everyone, and keep that cellular wisdom glowing. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.